Hey you guys, this is Jess with Sourceful Journey, back with another video of me. This camera can't wait to get a new stand. I, you know what, actually, because I threw away several and then I have this other one. I don't know why I'm telling you guys this story about my stands. I don't know, because I try to get it where you guys can get more of a closer view of, of me. <laughs> so I try to, but then I'll now touch my laptop. I don't know. So you guys can see me more and then i try to set it up on cinematic so it's more clear so you can see everything even down to like any little freckles that may have on my face which i don't as you guys can see i have a really good skin regimen yeah so anyhow as i said i can give the tips on it if you want it i, I might do a separate video on that because i always get asked it's like your skin is always glowing and blah 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 I'm like <laughs> if you guys only knew it's not that much to it some of the products i use now um I may do a separate video on that. Yes, I won't share too much of that in this video right now. But I wanted to focus on another topic here. Okay, let's do this one. So as you guys know, I tend to have a wide array when it comes to the type of options when it comes to music that I love. I'm, I'm one of those people I love. Oh my gosh, I love classic rock like no other. <sighs> I wish I could go through my, oh, I can't go through my playlist, hold on. So I'm gonna go through it right here. And I love my r and I love old school hip hop, you know. Um, what else? I like classical too, believe it or not. I have, uh, it's just my, so if people ask me, what is your favorite genre of music? I would tell them I'm all over the place, literally. Like you should see my playlist, it's the same. So some of the ones I have on here, I mean, I have something from Simple as Adele, but I mean, you're gonna talk about. Let's go down the list here. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Aerosmith for sure. <laughs> uh, Led Zeppelin. Valerie June. Oh yeah. There it goes. Okay. I want to get so excited about that. I'm so sorry. I'm such a nerd. Okay. 333 as I said that. <laughs> uh, I have Sam and Dave. You guys know Sam and Dave. They actually did the song uh, Hold On I'm Coming. So I love Evanescence. I love Jeezy. Fuel, Bobby Womack. I love jazz, so like Michael J. Thomas. Kenny G, oh my gosh, Kenny G. That man is a musical genius again, it's down. Oh, Scorpions, yes. Uh, I love Pauline Henry. Uh, and also the Almond Brothers Band, the Animals. Uh, bon Jovi, Bonnie Tyler, oh my gosh, Bootsy's rubber band, I love him, he's real old school, if you guys know, you know. The Cutting Crew, I love the Cutting Crew. They made the song, I Just Died in Your Arms Tonight, I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. Depeche Mode, their alternative, but they're uh, pretty good. I like their most recent album they did, Memento, wait, it's Memento Mori. They did pretty good with that album, I like it. Sweetwood Mac, I think I said them already. A Flock of Seagulls. Food Fighters. Foreigner is another one. Uh, they made a, they're a rock band. One of my favorite songs from them was That Was Yesterday. I don't know if you guys know it, but it was made in 84, which was well before I was born. <laughs> So as you guys can see, my music taste is all over the place. Oh, one that I found recently that I really love her work. She's more alternative. Her name is Aniko, it's I-N-I-K-O. If you look her up online, look up the song she did not too long ago called Jericho. <gasps> That's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Okay, it just dawned on me. Ah, did I write that down? I love Joshua. Alampur, he's known for his classical piece. There's this one particular piece he did called The Forsaken Waltz. It's a beautiful song. It's like no more than like maybe two minutes long, but it's beautiful when you listen to it. One of my all-time favorite groups, Journey. I'm a huge Journey fan. If someone had to ask me, Jessica, who's your top two uh, favorite, favorite music groups? When it comes to anything with like classic rock or alternative, 
I would say I love Nickelback. I, well, I did. I used to like them until I realized. I don't know. I like the, the beat behind their music. But some of the messaging just kind of didn't sit too well with me. Especially as I got older. I'm like, hmm. Like, really? I don't know about that. So they kind of like <laughs> went to the side for me. It was just some of the messaging. But I don't know. And then Chad Kroger, who was the lead singer. You know, the one with the blonde hair. And I used to have a huge crush on that guy. It's so crazy. So crazy. But, 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 but. Oh, I should tell you a funny story about that. Okay, so funny quick story time. This is going to be really interesting. So, I remember when I was in college and I was like really like listening to their music, uh, Nickelback, that is. I remember um, one of the songs that was really popular at that time was Someday. And then there were so many other ones that came after, like, and I remember, <clears throat> I had a huge crush on this guy, Chad Kroger. He had the whole thing, like wavy blonde hair, it was like shoulder length and kind of guitar, and, like so handsome. And so I remember, of course, coming from a Christian-based background, um, you know, being evangelical Baptist. Um, so they were very strict about things that you should not do or ways you should not think, things like that. And I was one of those ones that stuck to it to a T. So I kept thinking like, this is sinful. I mean, even be having a huge crush on this guy. It's not what God would want. I need to, you know, get over it. You know, it was just like my whole thought process was there. Because it, if you know, you know, especially growing up in the church. And so, and then it got worse. The funny part is that he had, <laughs> he had these rings on, right? So I'm thinking like, oh, I'm freaking out on the inside. I'm actually like, lusting after a guy who could possibly be married and i was really freaking out at that point i'm like oh my gosh i felt like i need to repent and all i was just like it was crazy 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 so to make a long story short um i remember it was like maybe a few years later he ended up getting married to avril lavigne and which was another one of my favorite artists and i have some of her pieces of uh music on my playlist too so i remember when i heard about that i'm like wait I'm like, he's married to Apple Levine. Like, I was very excited about it. I mean, I thought they were a great couple together. But I was thinking to myself, like, but wasn't he married? And so I did some digging. And I didn't realize that actually he wasn't married at the time. Um, he, I guess that's a thing that a lot of, um, like, rock stars, they tend to do. They tend to wear a lot of uh, jewelry and rings and things like that. And I didn't know that. Again, coming from a Christian-based background, you don't know you're not really privy to those details. Um, and around this time, this was like right when, you know, I got out of the house. I was actually living in the dorms. And, you know, coming from that environment, you don't know much about those things. You, you're very um, limited in terms of like what is considered like a fashion trend or what isn't. So to see that one a guy, I was like, I didn't realize this because I came from an environment where I didn't see men wearing all those type of rings unless it was like just their wedding ring. Um, so that was a bit of an eye-opening experience. And looking back at it, I have to laugh because at least I know my my heart was right. My heart was trying to be pure in terms of don't like look in a lustful way towards someone else's spouse. <laughs> that was what I was trying to avoid. And I started feeling bad about it. I'm like, this is just wrong. <laughs> but at the same time, he was so handsome with me. And so uh, to make a long story short, <clears throat> you know, well, like, that was just a, a phase that I went through in terms of my, my college years, having a huge crush on that guy. But um, I remember, uh, well, there was something else that happened. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Never mind, never mind. Whole point I'm trying to make here is that um, that was just one of those funny experiences that I'll never forget. It was just something I just had to tell you guys about, but at least my, my thought process, my intentions were in the right space, but the reality of it all is I could just like relax a little and just accept the fact that, hey, you know, that's just the fashion trend. You know, a lot of people who are in the rock world, they tend to wear a lot of the rings and the, the bracelets and chains and things. That's a part of their fashion trend too. Oh, Kenny G, Kenny Rogers, Lionel Richie is another one of my favorites. 
Led Zeppelin, Leonard Skinner, another one of my favorites. Love me some Leonard Skinner for sure. Madonna, she has a few good ones. I love the Mamas and the Papas. The title of the group is so funny. Um, but they actually have a few good hits there. I love me some Marvin Gaye. Oh my goodness. Oh, Michael Jackson, of course. Who could not love Michael Jackson? The man's a musical genius. He was a musical genius. I'm sorry. I love the neurons. Not many people talk about the neurons, which I don't understand. They're a really good group. They have some soulful. Well, it's a soul. I mean, their music is army and soul. There's this one song, you guys haven't heard it, look it up on YouTube, it's called Hurry Up Tomorrow, and it's by the New Rhymes, it's N-U dash, there's like a little dash, no underscore, N-U dash, R-O-N-S. Something about that song, when I heard it, I'm like, this was a song that I actually had to put on repeat, I couldn't believe it, it was just so, so good. Um, who else? Uh, the OJs, of course. The Partridge. <laughs> the Partridge family. Yes. Don't judge me. Okay. Okay. So, yes, the Partridge family. So, that's what they got that song. It's kind of a cheesy song, but it was just so cute that they downloaded it. Don't judge me. It's called I Woke Up in Love This Morning. So cute. So. Dorky. This is so cute. The message is so cute that's behind it. So I downloaded it. I need someone to sing that to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. Oh, oh my gosh. No. No, no, no. Well, just for humor, I guess. But I hope no one sings that to me. I hope my next future boo never sing that song to me in public, at least. Did it for humor behind closed doors. That's a different story. We can then joke about it then. Okay, what else? Let's see. Bill Collins. Oh my goodness. That man is a musical genius. I don't have so many songs by him on my list. Of course, the famous song in the air tonight. Long, long way to go. That's a beautiful song too. One song that I think is pretty fun, but it really gets you going and it's one of my favorites to listen to. It's called um, Easy Lover. It's by him. And then there, the guy who makes it with him is Philip Baker, I think it is. See the name. Let me see if I can see it. Mm, I don't want it to play loud. Let's see. Well, it's going to probably get loud. We'll try it. Phil, no, Philip Bailey. No, I don't want to get copyrighted. Wait, not copyrighted, but I don't want to get in trouble. I want YouTube to, you know, cancel my video out just because I played a little of it. I don't want them to just go ahead and just say, oh, you got to delete it. But look it up yourself, you guys. It's Easy Lover. Um, it's by Phil Collins and Philip Bailey. He's on there, too. I love this version of it. Oh, and there's some other ones. Su Su Studio. <laughs> Su Su Studio. So, um, One More Night, Another Day in Paradise. Oh, Phil Collins is another musical genius in my opinion. I want somebody to debate me on that. <laughs> I would love to actually meet him someday. He's, he's amazing. Prince. Rolls Royce. If you guys know, Rolls Royce did song wishing upon a star or was actually wishing on a star that was another beautiful piece seal is one of my favorites he did this song kiss from a rose future love paradise i loved his version of it's a man's 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 world it was more of a, his version of james brown's song it's a man's world. His version was really, really good. I had to download that one. Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Stevie Wonder, okay. 
Ribbon in the Sky. And there's another song on there I want to talk about. Um, Sting. Super Tramp. If you guys listen to the song, it's called The Logical Song. It's pretty cool. I actually like Super Tramp. It's a pretty interesting group. Taylor Dane. One of the songs she was known for is a song she made in 87. It was called, uh, it was like, Tell Me Too Hard. Mm -mm -mm. I'll sing the song, but you guys go listen to it. You'll see why. It's very catchy. Tears for Fears. They did the song called Shout. I love that too. Another great music artist that's not often talked about and uh, may she rest in peace. It was Tina Marie. One of her songs that she did that really just, it touches my core when I listen to it every time. It's called Out on a Limb. If you haven't had a chance to take a moment to listen to it. Tina Marie, T-E-E-N-A. I love me some Temptations. So The Temptations is still one of my favorites. I love Thin Lizzy. Thin Lizzy, such a funny name, but they're, they're a really good group. Uh, it's hard rock for them. Thin Lizzy, they did this song, it was back in 83. It was called um, The Sun Goes Down. It was made in 83. Take a look at that. I actually like Three Six Mafia too. I love Three Dog Night. Three Dog Night, they made this song called One. And this song came out in 1969. If you haven't heard of the song or haven't had a chance to listen to it, take a moment to do so. And you probably heard the song and didn't realize that that was the title of it and that was the group behind it made it. It's called One. I love Toto. Especially when they made that song called Hold the Line. That's another good one. Hold the Line. The Turtles, they made the song in 67. It's a pop song called Happy Together. It's by the Turtles. So if you hadn't had a chance to say definitely listen to them also. The Turtles, the Turtles. I like Tyrese. He made this song called Sweet Lady. That was one of my favorites. It was made in 98. So definitely say listen to them. Well, listen to him if you haven't. Tyrese is more R&B soul. Yeah. Usher is another good one. White Snake, yes. White Snake, they're a hard rock band. One of my favorite songs from them, and it was in 87, is called Is This Love? That song really speaks to me. Especially nowadays, without going into too many details. But it definitely speaks to me. Whitney Houston, of course. Yvonne, was it Yvonne Element? She did this song, and it really speaks to me, especially now, too. In a good way. It's called If I Can't Have You. It's like, it's so funny. It was made in 1977. And I remember when I first heard it, it was, it was weird. One morning I woke up and I just started thinking about it. I, and the tune was so random. It was so random because mind you, this was made in 77 and I was even brought into existence at that time, all right? But somehow this tune had randomly started playing in my mind one morning when I woke up. It was like sometime last year. I'm like, I, I'm like, I know I heard that somewhere before. I know I heard it somewhere. I just couldn't remember, I couldn't put my finger on it, like where I may have heard it. Or at what point? And then I went searching for, I'm like, I went looking for the lyrics, I'm like, I was piecing it together. It was so weird. It was like, I was like, if I can't have you. And then I was piecing it together, like certain other parts that I remembered in terms of the lines. Did a little Google search. And when I did the Google search, that was when it popped up. I was like, oh, okay, let me see if I can go find it on, on YouTube, like find a music video or something. And so I did that. And, you know, when I went to go find it, and I was, I was like, really blown away because it really felt like, it felt, it's just weird how the universe, how God works, because somehow they put those type of signs and synchronicities and those, you know, type of things in your 
focus, your line of focus, whether it may be numbers, music, things like that as an example. And you're like, that's when you know that the universe is trying to connect with you, they're contacting you, you know, that they're finding ways to kind of bring into your focus. Now for me, I pay attention to numbers and everything I see in my everyday existence uh, physically, but also music is another one that's always been a key piece to me too. So the fact that that was something that just kind of came up into my, my focus that morning, I'll never forget it. I was really kind of caught off guard. Like, how did that happen? Because again, the song was made in 77. I wasn't even thought of. So how I didn't even know. I didn't even know the song that well. Um, for some reason, ever since it popped up and I downloaded it, I would go back to it periodically. But it definitely is something that resonated with me for sure. And it still does. Without saying too much. I love ZZ Top. ZZ Top is another one. They actually uh, made this song called Shark Dress Man. It's something about the song. It's a hard rock song. Um, as you guys probably know, I love a lot of hard rock. <laughs> I love rock in general, but I think you start to see a pattern, right? Um, <clears throat> but this song, it's just like when you listen to it, the beat is so catchy. You just can't help but want to vibe out to it. I, I like it. And it's on my list. It's like, you belong to the city. Let me see if I can find it. Oh my gosh, it's gonna keep bothering me to that search. That's who it was. It was actually um, Glenn Frey. I like that song, so I downloaded it. As you guys can imagine, I added it to my playlist. But it's called, You Belong to the City. It's so catchy, it was so weird. Um, what was the story behind that one? Because that was another song that was just popped up into my existence, if you will. And this song was made in, was it in two? No, when was this ever made? Hold on, that's not accurate. Something is off. Let's see here. Yeah, when was this song made? 85. Okay, so the song was made in 85, right? Which was, um, I'm an 80s baby, so. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is that, um, I'm trying to figure out how this song popped up. Because I've never heard of it. It was sometime last year to go back through my notes because you know a lot of the stuff that I know is in my day-to-day -day, when it comes to taking this journey I would actually write it out type it out you name it in my own way uh saving like images and things like that just kind of like keeping tabs on my notes in my day-to-day -day. and this was one of them this particular song I forgot how it popped up into my my focus but all I know is that I remember I downloaded it, and then for some reason, so many times um, thereafter, I would start hearing remnants of it in other places. And then even got to a point that I would start hearing other YouTubers talking about it in their song, in, in their videos too. They would talk about the song in their video too. 2023, as I said that. So I think. I don't know, I forgot how this actually popped up in my, my focus. But uh, anyway, that's one of those songs that I downloaded too when I noticed it popped up. And I was like, okay, maybe I need to download this. So that's it for my little list there, you guys. What are some of you guys' favorite hits that you remember from back in the 90s, 80s, even up to the 60s, 50s maybe? What are some of your favorite genres of music, whether it may be classical, rock, hard rock, alternative, gospel, R&B, rap, hip hop, old school hip hop, to be exact. You know, it'll be interesting to hear some of you guys' feedback on that. Definitely don't hesitate to leave comments in the comment section below. You can also message me on my other platforms as well. Consultations are still open, so if it is something that is of interest to you, definitely take advantage and contact me. 
Um, I would definitely want to encourage you guys to contact me over on um, my other platforms. Like you could just send me a message in my DM section, like on Instagram, um, or you can just send me an email. Emails work just as well. Uh, so, but yeah, other than that, as always, I'm definitely some you guys with love and light, and I will see you in the next video. Be blessed, you guys.